Hey folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to measure the diffusion coefficient using a rotating disc electrode, or RDE. The diffusion coefficient is a proportionality constant that relates the flux of molecules due to molecular diffusion to a change in the concentration gradient. The diffusion coefficient is used in many fields of science, but for electrochemists it's a particularly useful parameter and can be determined using a variety of electrochemical techniques such as cyclotometry, chronoamperometry, ultramicroelectrodes, etc. However, in this video we will specifically be going over how to determine the diffusion coefficient using a rotating disc electrode. The rotating disc electrode has been a reliable technique for measuring kinetically slow and irreversible redox reaction. Analysis using the other techniques doesn't tend to work quite so well or leads to inaccuracies. Now we'll be going over the Levitch equation and some rotating disc electrode data to determine the diffusion coefficient of ferrocinium, which is generated from the oxidation of ferrocene in this redox reaction. The experimental parameters are below. We performed rotating disc electrode experiments and collected these S-shaped or steady state voltammograms at different rotation rates. We then calculated the mass transport limiting current at each rotation rate, and we have a separate video on how to calculate the limiting current. Link is in the description below. With the limiting current versus rotation rate data, we will use the Levitch equation to determine the diffusion coefficient. This is the Levitch equation. I sub L is our mass transport limiting current. That's the data we collected from the rotating disc electrode experiments. There is a constant uh, we need uh, in front in order to do math. N is the number of electrons transferred in our redox reaction. In the case of ferrocene to ferrocinium, N is one. F is Faraday's constant. A is the area of the working electrode. This can be calculated geometrically for a polished electrode, but if you can determine the electrochemically active surface area, your results will be more accurate. C is the concentration of the bulk redox molecule. In this case, it's the concentration of ferrocene in solution. Nu is the kinematic viscosity, which is the ratio of the density and the absolute viscosity of our electrolyte solution. Typically, this will be a value that you need to look up. In the Levitch equation, the kinematic viscosity is raised to the minus one-sixth power. D is the diffusion coefficient, and that's what we're ultimately solving for. It is raised to the two-thirds power. And lastly, we have omega, which is the angular rotation rate. It's how fast our electrode is rotating. Each limiting current value we collected was recorded at a different rotation rate. Omega is raised to the one-half power. When determining the diffusion coefficient, there's several considerations to make regarding the units. Below you can see a table of each parameter in the Levitch equation and its corresponding units. The units are listed on whether they are International System of Units, SI units, the units chemists and electrochemists prefer to use, and units used in the Levitch equation. I've highlighted three key areas where units can cause problems in determining the diffusion coefficient. The first is the limiting current. Typically when electrochemists make measurements using RDE, they are working with small quantities of redox molecules. The resulting current tends to be in the micro or milliamp range but the Levitch equation is in amps. So make sure that you convert your micro or milliamps to amps when performing calculations. Second, and perhaps my most frustrating one, is concentration. Chemists tend to think in terms of molarity, which is moles per liter. However, the units of concentration in the Levitch equation are moles per cubic centimeter. This represents a factor of 1,000 difference, and I've messed up plenty of diffusion coefficient calculations because of it. Lastly, the angular rotation rate that chemists generally use is rotations per minute, or RPM. This comes from the fact that most rotators report the rotation rate at RPM instead of radians per second. The units used in the Levitch equation as well as SI units are in radians per second, so you need to make sure that you convert between RPM and radians per second. So now that we understand the equation, let's take a look at some rotating disc electrode data. So I have my rotating disc electrode data. This is the rotation rate and this is the limiting current. 
Uh, rotation rate is in RPM and limiting current is in microamps. Now I could use Excel in order to do the data analysis, but I want to use Aftermath because it's gonna make things a lot easier. So I can actually copy these points, just hit the Control C. All right, so I'm in Aftermath. I'm gonna create a new archive. I'm gonna right click, go to new, create a new plot. Right click and then I'm going to paste. So the data points that I have in Excel have no units, but I can assign units to them when I paste it into Aftermath. So the x-axis data is the rotation rate. So let me just click on rotation rate and that's in units of rotations per minute. And then on the y-axis, uh, the units are current. They're in amps, but I actually have microamps. So the current's in amps, but I can actually change the prefix to micro. All right, and then I'm gonna hit OK. And now I have a new plot. The next thing that I want to do is I wanna be able to make this plot using the square root of the rotation rate. So I wanna raise the x-axis data to the one half power. So to do that, I can perform a basic math operation. I'm gonna left click on the data points. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to apply transform and go to basic math operation. And then I'm going to perform this on the x-axis data only. And then I'm gonna hit square root and then go to okay. And now you can see here in the bottom, I have the rotation rate data raised to the one half power. All right, so all of these data points here are actually connected by a line by default. I just wanna change that. It'll be a little easier for you to see the individual data points. And now the next thing I want to do is to perform the linear regression, I am going to actually use the baseline tool. So I'm gonna left click on the data points, right click, go to add tool, I'm gonna to hit baseline. After I hit baseline, it creates this linear regression. And over here you can see it gives me the slope and the y-intercept. So if we look at the Levitch equation, the limiting current is my dependent variable and the rotation rate is my independent variable, which leaves the slope equal to the rest of the parameters. Next, I will set the slope that I've calculated using aftermath equal to all these parameters, leaving the diffusion coefficient term out and we will be solving for the diffusion coefficient. I've already looked up numbers for things like the kinematic viscosity, the calculated area of a five millimeter outer diameter working electrode, and they are applied here in this table along with the correct units for the Levitch equation. Now I will do a little bit of algebra in order to solve for the diffusion coefficient. Five hours later. After my algebra, I get a diffusion coefficient of 1.78 times 10 to the minus five, centimeters squared per second. If I compare that to the value published in the scientific literature, I get a really good match. 1.7 times 10 to the minus five centimeters squared per second. And there you have it folks. That is how you determine the diffusion coefficient using a rotating disc electrode. I hope you thought this video was useful. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with any colleagues who you think this might be useful and beneficial for, all right? Consider subscribing as we try to come up with more uh, video content for our YouTube channel and general content uh, for all of you electrochemists out there. All right, see you soon.